Thank you, Terry, for coming tonight. I get back here without knocking any cords out. You really want me way back here? <laughs> <laughs> this way a little bit. There you go. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> I'm Terry Knockman. Um, retired Air Force, born in Wyoming. Uh, been all over the country, been all over the world. Um, disabled veteran at this point, uh, still trying to drive a truck. And uh, so, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but me being uh, retired military, when all this started happening, I got a little upset. And I was a little bit disappointed that we're just rolling over and letting them take it from us. And so, <clears throat> you know, I was all geared up, ready to go. We have to take it back. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? And nothing happened. And we waited. And we waited. And nothing happened. And now it's been almost two years. So, I'm pretty frustrated about that. I'm hanging out in Wyoming. I'm not getting a lot done, but I'm sure, you know, worried about the country and where we're going, right? Then I find out about the People's Convoy. And I get thinking about that, and it's like, well, wait a minute. I have a truck, and I'm retired, so I don't have to run the truck all the time. So I decided to jump through hoops in about four days and get everything ready to go and catch not the People's Convoy, because they had already left at that point, but the Freedom Convoy, which was coming through my area. Um, I don't know if you guys realize it or not, but there are, I, I don't even know how many convoys there are now. I, I couldn't even begin to guess. I would guess each state probably has one. So uh, I know that Missouri has one, and Missouri's actually leaving on the 15th to go to D.C. for the children. And it's about the human trafficking and the children trafficking and things like that. It's going to uncover uh, some of the dirt on uh, basically lawyers and uh, judges and people like that that are actually making money off of the human trafficking. So uh, that is a uh, individual, I can't think of his name right now, but I just met him last weekend at the uh, Capitol. Uh, does anybody here, did anybody here go up to the Capitol? Uh, last week or a couple weeks ago for the rally up there. So we had, uh, <clears throat> I, I barely got here in time. I just left the People's Convoy in California and came back out here to pick up where I was at two months before and try to uh, get some of the things done I needed to get done and then jump back into the convoys. But um, basically uh, the Capitol, we, we went up there to the Capitol of Missouri the other day and had 100 plus people there, a um, lot of really good speakers, uh, people that have been um, personally injured through some of the uh, vaccinations and, and things like that. Uh, just a lot of good information. Uh, we had uh, Mark, uh, what's his name from St. Louis, the one that had the AR that was standing out in the yard. Yeah, his, him and his wife were there. And, a lot of people like that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> point being made is they, they're, things are starting to happen on the state level all over the country. And it's so good to meet you guys last week when I came here and to find out about you guys. I, I just happened to be sitting in the VA and ran across JP and he's like, are you a charger? I'm like, yeah, why did you know that? <laughs> and I had a shirt on. so. The, the, gave it away but anyway so he invited me over here which is kind of cool because this is right up the alley of what we're dealing with um, and what you guys are doing right now is what everybody needs to be doing and you need to do it even more fervently just keep yeah. after it just keep pounding and pounding and digging and learning I'm a ranch kid politics to me is like a fish out of water. Uh, I dealt with the military, but politics is a different animal. It's a different world. I'm not even comfortable with it, but I'm telling you what, if I could go back, I would have gotten into something because 
we just let it go. And um, it's going to take a little while to get it back. So <clears throat> here I am. I'm sitting in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and a uh, convoy's coming through. So we jump in and we ride with the Freedom Convoy because they were a week behind the People's Convoy. We go all the way across the nation. Um, there's no feeling in the world that I can even describe, except for you don't run out of goosebumps. I, I found that out. You do not run out of goosebumps. But there's no feeling that I can describe how when you come underneath an overpass at each bridge, all the way through each state, and it's covered with people and flags. So I'm sitting in Wyoming and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, I didn't do a whole lot of Facebooking, but in the last year or so, I finally got onto Facebook a little bit and I started touching base with some of the military people I retired with and things like that. And I just didn't see anybody else being a whole lot concerned about what was going on. And I was really worried about the country and the direction we were going. And, and so when this convoy came up, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll try it because it's something I can do. So I jumped in and you start crossing those highways and you start seeing all the support, you realize that you're not the only person out there that knows something's wrong. I felt like I was the only one. As we've traveled across the nation, we've met so many people and heard so many stories about people that said the exact same thing. And they heard about us, they came out, and they started supporting. Some of them joined us, whether they were in an RV, or a car, or a truck, or a chartreuse bus. We actually had a chartreuse bus, believe it or not. And I'm not sure if there were seven hippies in it or not, but anyway. <laughs> Point is, is this, um, we're not alone. There's a lot of folks that are worried about their country, worried about freedom, worried about the direction we're going, and we are not alone. And that is probably the biggest takeaway that I got from the whole convoy was I found that out across the nation. Now, you get into different states and you're gonna run into some, um, Sure, what the word, right word would be for it. some uh, kickback or some pushback. <laughs> yeah. And different parts of the states, like Illinois, <laughs> you would have nothing, nothing, like literally nothing. And then you'd look off to the side and you'd find, oh, there's a cop on each side of the bridge holding all the people back. Yeah. And you get a little farther down to the state, and all of a sudden, the cops aren't doing that. They're on the bridge with the people. So there's obviously a difference, okay, in that same state. And I was thinking the whole time, I was thinking, I, I would have thought they'd been really tired of this by now. <laughs> but um, so basically, <clears throat> we're not alone. We're out there. And as we start to wake people up, um, you know, we started out saying, we got to go wake up the sheep. We just got to wake them up. They don't realize what's happening here. Some of them don't, some of them do. So that's what we did. We went out to DC, we shook the bushes, we scared the Metro DC police to death. We broke their budget. We have a lawsuit against them right now because what they did to us in DC was unconstitutional. Yes. And they know it and they're gonna lose. Um, they blocked every exit. We would buy the permit, talk to the leadership the night before, the day before, agreeing on which exit we could take, how we were gonna do it, which trucks we could take down there, loaded or trailered or not, and things like that. We were working with them as much as we could. And we get there the next day, every exit blocked. They had every snow plow, every mall cop, every anybody that they could come up with blocking every exit all the way and they literally had on the on the signs the electric signs rolling roadblock they talked to Trudeau yep <clears throat> so they were scared to death of all the soccer bands soccer mom with bands and RVs and people like that and people with flags and, and 
just so you know too, uh, in the beginning, we, People's Convoy and the Freedom Convoy and all these convoys, yeah, you get a lot of really um, fervent people out there that they really got their heart burned about certain things, okay? So they're gonna fly those flags, right? It took a while, we finally convinced people that look, we're not out to attack any one group or any one person or any one uh, po political uh, direction. This is totally nonpartisan. We finally got them all convinced that if you just fly an American flag, and you could do some uh, we the people are pissed off flags or don't trade on me flags, things like that, that's okay. But keep the flags to the basics because the basics is what we were fighting. We're not fighting the mandate for the shots or the mandate for the masks. Yeah, those all come along with some of that, but that wasn't our goal. Our goal was to get the emergency order shut off. The emergency order has been enacted over two years now. It's gone. That emergency is long gone, and they're still using it. As long as they use that emergency order, they can treat us like terrorists. They can bring in the National Guard and have us arrested. They can do anything they want to do, just like Trudeau did in Canada. So we've got to get the emergency order shut off. That is our main goal as convoys, whether it's People's Convoy, Freedom Convoy, any of the convoys. Um, <clears throat> with that said, there are other issues coming up all the time. And I, I've got, <clears throat> I got hit in the eye with a hydraulic hose a few days, just before I came in here the other night, <laughs> the, last, the last week. <clears throat> and so I can't really read right now. And I was going to have somebody read this, but I think we'll maybe we'll do that as, on another night. But uh, go to the People's Convoy, pull down the um, the ten tyrannical bills that California was getting ready to pass. Spend a little bit of time and read through each one of those bills. It will raise the hair on the back of your neck. Things that you can't even believe that we as human beings are even talking about. There's a lady out there in California that has lost her mind, and she had a bill in that would allow uh, termination of a baby 28 days after its birth. Yep. Yeah, they tabled that mm -hmm. because they heard we were coming to California. Guess what they did? They stepped it up. Yeah. They went to a year after wow. birth. Wow. Okay? Can you believe that? I mean, I, I got goosebumps right now. That's just, why are we even talking about something like that? That's just insane. But that's the kind of stuff they're working on. So here's the thing. If California does it, guess what's going to happen? New York. Within a year or two, a bunch of others are going to be doing the same thing. As a matter of fact, Maryland's already done it. And Colorado is Yeah, Colorado's just as bad. So... <clears throat> We get out to D.C., we're fighting that fight, we run into the, no kidding, roadblocks. And so some of our, we, we started getting a little bit smarter about how we are going to do it. And we kept our normal main convoy running around the Beltway and running through D.C. and scaring them and keeping them busy and wearing out their budget and all that stuff. In the meantime, we had... 10 or 12 trucks over here, and 10 or 12 trucks over here, and they would slip in <laughs> the back door in different places and get in and make it down to DC, <coughs> downtown. <clears throat> and so they did that several times just to prove to them that if we really want to get down there, we'll get down there. But we were just trying to be peaceful. We were trying to be law-abiding, even though they weren't. So um, as, as they started blocking exits, we went to the far left lane. Well, what that did was it showed all those people that were trying to get off to go to work or go to the airport. You can't believe how I many people missed their flights because they could not get off to go to the airport. I'm sure a lot of important people. Matter of fact, some of our own convoy people couldn't make their flights <laughs> that were trying to fly out to go meet, you know, different places, different people. So. Um, the short story of that is, is by us going to the left lane, it made it real obvious we weren't trying to get off the interstate. 
anymore. Now the DC Metro looks stupid because there's six lanes of traffic and they're not letting anybody off the highway the whole time we're going around this thing. And all those people are realizing this and now they're getting out of their cars and going up to the cops and saying, they're not even trying to get off the highway. We need to go to work. We need to get on this plane. We saw people dragging their luggage off the highway, up ramps going towards the airport on foot because their Ubers couldn't get off the road. So, <clears throat> yes, those are painful moments for those people, I'm sure, but the point is, it made it a little bit of an impact. It woke some people up. When we first got to DC, we were told we were number one all day long. We were brake checked everywhere we went. Some of us got into wrecks. Uh, it cost some of us our trucks. And um, we're pretty sure that some of it was set up by the DC Metro at least the higher ups to make us look at it. But we didn't bite, we didn't fight, we stayed peaceful and we rolled on. But one thing we did do is we stayed together. We didn't leave each other. If something happened, I got into a situation with my truck and uh, my convoy stopped and they wouldn't move until they let go of me. Had they not done that, I'd probably be in January 6th jail right now. So. Um, there's ways to do it. You just gotta work it peacefully. You don't hear about any of this stuff on the news. Nothing is gonna be said about this on the news. As a matter of fact, if anything makes the news, just reverse it. That's right. Whatever they say, reverse it. And that's probably what happened, okay? Um, so we do the DC thing. We agree to meet with different uh, congressmen and people like that. And the, the organizers, they told these people as they met, as they were gonna agree to meet with them, we're gonna live stream this meeting. Well, they don't like that. They don't like to be live streamed. They don't like to have anything on record, right? So that's how you make them be accountable for what they're saying and what they're doing, right? So we're live streaming it. If you guys have not been to any of the live streams, now, I granted, I can't watch all the live streams because they, some people are just hooked on them. But to me, it's just like daytime soap operas, you know? <laughs> but at the same time, when things are happening and we're like in DC and there's, and there's stuff recorded now that you can go back and look at while we were in DC that happened, they're insane. You can't believe that in this country, those things happen. Just short of what Canada dealt with, okay? We are so close to being where Canada was at right now that we've got to keep pushing. So if you want to look at some of the live streams, I, what I would recommend, I don't have a list of them, but they're on the People's Convoy's website. Go to the website, dig up what, somewhere on there, there's a place where it shows who has live streams. I will tell you this, um, there's a few of them that are just Hardcore, really good ones. First responder is one of them. Um, I would say that uh, <clears throat> X-Ray, who's the guy who leads the convoy all the time, he started doing one. He's really good. Uh, he's raw. He's straight up the way it's happening. He's ex-military, and so you will get exactly what he gets. So you'll see it. Uh, but there are, you know, a bunch of others too. Some of them are just doing it for fun. Some of them are doing it for documentation purposes, okay? And those are the guys you want to try to follow. Those guys are, are truly getting this stuff in history somewhere. Because the media is not. Um, so, we deal with DC and we get to a point where we're having a few meetings but most of the congressmen, even even one of the Democratic congressmen wanted to be with us. And so that's what we wanted. We wanted to be nonpartisan. We wanted to be able to go and meet any one of them. Doesn't matter who they were. What we really wanted is for them to come out to Hagerstown and meet with us on our turf. The only one that did that, well, there was some elected, or uh, people who want to be elected that did that, but uh, 
Ted Cruz was the only one that actually came out to the Hagerstown, and he actually got a truck ride all the way to D.C., right to the White House. That was the only truck that got loud down there. <laughs> but he had his entourage of security with him, so they let him go. <laughs> but um, my point was, was this, is <clears throat> these guys don't want to be live streamed. They don't want to be recorded that they said this or agreed to this or whatever. And so many times they had to walk out of these meetings and they couldn't believe that we would actually walk out of a meeting with them because they think they're so special. They think that they're so much better off than we are that they can't believe we would walk out on a meeting with them if we don't, if they won't let it be live streamed. We do that for you. We do that for the people. Good. So the people see exactly what's going on <laughs> real time, okay? So, but watching the news, Go look for some of these live streams. When they're traveling, yeah, hit it a little bit, check it out, see where they're at, whatever, and then move on. Because it's just too much draw. You know, just on you put ten truckers in a room or in, in a gravel pit together and they're not gonna get along. <laughs> so to put a truck convoy together and make them all do something is actually really uh, quite a feat and I don't know if anybody else here is a truck driver or not or has a CDL or has experience with trucking or not but uh, it is um, it's a different world so what we did then when DC failed it didn't fail I mean we did accomplish some things but because we couldn't get downtown like we wanted to um, we this California deal happened and I would encourage you guys to go look up these tyrannical the, there's 10 bills that they were voting on and uh, we rushed back to Cal uh, California to fight these bills. That's why they went all the way back out west. Then, uh, now they are headed back across to the east coast again, to DC, they're in Nebraska right now. Uh, there are some Freedom Convoys out there that are headed that way. Some of them are still out there. Some of the Freedom Convoys are still out there and hitting the capitals in the area of the states that will not vote to get rid of this emergency order. So they're beating them. Um, we had, last count, I think we had 32 or something states that were on board with getting rid of the emergency order. And I think they had to have 38, if I remember right, or something like that. So they're trying to beat up some of these states and try to get them to you know, wake up and, and get this thing voted out. Get, get rid of this emergency order, get it shut off so we can go back to normal. And, um, so that, that was our main focus. Now our focus is still the same, but it's shifting in motivation. It's shifting in tactics. Now as they go back out there, there's a, a lot of different ways they're gonna deal with this because it didn't work the way we wanted it to last time we were there because of what they did. Um, so we'll see how things go as they come through. Uh, we have the Missouri group that's going out few days after the People's Convoy comes through. Uh, we will be leaving, uh, I think it was on the 4th or 13th out of here, or out of uh, St. Louis area, and going across. Um, if my eye gets better where I can drive. And if not, then I'll catch up with them a week or so later. But uh, that convoy is headed back out to, to meet up with the People's Convoy. Uh, the Missouri convoy is going out for the children's uh, rights. They will do their thing and then they will meet up with the people's convoy. Um, there's been, let's just clear something real quick. For a while now, there's been a little bit of, um, <clears throat> um, like, I don't know if it's dissension or what it is, but you know, when you get people together and you get get organizations going, everybody wants to be the boss or whatever, the leader or whatever. Or their feelings get hurt or what happens, uh, you, you just never know. There's all kinds of little issues, right? So between the People's Convoy and the Freedom Convoy and a few of the others, they got a little bit of roughed up a little bit. Um, but they've kind of worked through that now. And there's been kind of a, what I call a purge <coughs> of the convoys. And so now you've got this core that stayed with it and they're kind of keep them going. Now they're regenerating support again to go back out. Um, I think <clears throat> this next time they go, 
it'll be more productive. I think it will be, um, hopefully it won't take as long. <laughs> uh, you know, we're basically, we've woke up the sheep, as many as one of you woke up, now we're waking up the lions. And the lions are the people that are gonna go fight. They're the people that are gonna do what you guys are doing and challenging and checking into and calling people and finding out, you know, hold people accountable, basically. And so that's what we need. And you know, they back back when we were at Hagerstown, that's what they called for. Everybody go out to your states and start rattling those cages and start beating them up and start going to your capitals and, and you know, following up on all this stuff. And everybody start doing that. Uh, that's that's really where it's at. That's why last week when I was here, I said that's where it starts. It starts in the school boards. It starts in the city councils and all these places that you're talking about right now. That's exactly where it starts. And that is more important than anything else we can do. So we're gonna go back out. Uh, the Freedom Convoy's out there. We're gonna all join back up again, uh, join forces and have a better tactic this time. Uh, they won't tell me exactly what their tactic is yet because it's still kind of top secret, whatever, but uh, So that's the plan um, I Just want to let you guys know that it, they haven't given up and They didn't leave DC because they got ran out like the news tried to make it look like They left DC for an important reason to go back to California to fight those 10 bills uh, If we don't stop those bills in California, they're gonna be everywhere else and we'll have to try to stop them every time. so some of them have actually slipped into some of the other states. So. Um, sometime I can sit down and, and uh, you know, I can answer a couple questions right now, but sometime I can sit down and actually, you know, go through in depth what we what we went through. But, uh, you know, if you've got anything specific that you'd like to ask, go ahead. We have some questions. Thank you, Terry. Go ahead. Good job. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service. And thank you for yeah. watching. Thank you. Uh, how do we help? The, con the convoy pays for the fuel. That's why they ask for donations. They pay for the fuel and they pay for the food. Uh, had it not been for that, we would have had to quit a long time before we did because we would have ran out. Um, I got literally struck, stuck in California with no money to get back to here. The Freedom Convoy that I rode out to the west or to the east with found out about it. They got online and they generated some income over the uh, cash apps and things like that, whatever they do. And boom, before I knew it, I had money to pay for fuel to get me back to here and I had just enough money to get me here. So that's, that's one thing, because we spent everything we had. We did everything we had to be out there for two months. And even though they're paying for fuel and they're paying for food, there's still a lot of expenses going on and all your bills that are going on at home are still going on. They don't stop. Uh, some people are more fortunate than others because they were in a better position when this happened. One of the reasons why I wanted to come back was I wanted to get some of my bills under control, get them cleaned up and done so that I could actually not have that holding over my head where I had to, you know, because I, for most of us, we all want to pay our bills. So we don't want to, you know, just because we're out there on a good cause doesn't mean we shouldn't pay our bills. So that's all right. That's all right. Um, I've been following the People's Convoy, but I also saw the Freedom Convoy, and it seems confusing on what each is standing for, and is there a reason, you kind of addressed it, that there was a dispute, but is there one that's more basic to rights versus another? No. Um, <laughs> it's funny because the People's Convoy is what got me excited about doing what I did, but the Freedom Convoy is the one that got me out there. They're also the one that got me home <laughs> after two months of running with the People's Cowboys. So you, you can kind of see the conflict there, right? When we got to DC with the Freedom Convoy, we had, I want to say it was 130 semis and more cars and RVs than I could count. I know the People's Convoy, when they went through uh, Oklahoma, I think it was, the troopers told them they were 30 something miles long. When, you know, and, and throughout a convoy, you have people getting in and getting out constantly. Some people ride with you to the next exit. Some people ride with you through their state. Some people ride, we, I'm not kidding. We saw, and I never believed this. We saw a guy who was hauling a crane 
on an oversized trailer, pull off, and we heard about it up front. By the time we got there, he was already unhooked from his trailer on the ramp and joined into the convoy. And we're like, his boss is gonna be pissed. <laughs> but what he did is he ran, it was night, and so he just ran with us, turned around, went back so that he could pick that trailer up that next morning and keep on going. So it was really kind of cool. So you see a lot of people doing that. Um, you see a lot of people jump out and run for a while, you know, make some loads, make some money, pay the bills, and then jump back in again. I can't tell you how many times that's happened. Uh, what I would say between the two convoys is this. They're both right. They're just like anything else in, in the world where you got humans that this is the way to do it. And then somebody else says, this is the way to do it. They're both right. So, um, we did go through a purging uh, at one point and we kept all of us that were in the Freedom Convoy finally agreed to it and said, we gotta get over to the People's Convoy at Hagerstown and join them. We need to be doing this together. This needs to be all one big convoy. I don't care what you call it. So we did that. Uh, as, okay, first of all, we were spiritually attacked big time, okay? Uh, we, we, and I, can, I could just go on for hours about the things and the stories I've heard uh, that have happened. Um, the wrecks that they caused uh, us and, and you know, people that were in the convoy. Um, so from the get-go, we were being attacked. Uh, the evil one does not want us out there, doesn't want us doing what we were doing, doesn't want us waking anybody up. So, uh, you know, they got, it, it, somehow it got in to the convoys and it started festering and we went through a purging. And we lost a lot of people, a lot of trucks, a lot of people. I think most of those people will come back this time around if we're productive. If we have a good plan and we're productive and we work it the way we were supposed to do it, I think they'll come back. And that's what they're doing right now, is coming back across Picking it back up again, they've learned some lessons, both of them, both sides, and now they're trying to work through what they learned and do it differently this time. My second question is, I went up to St. Louis for that, um, and I was on the overpass. I'm not a truck driver, so I can't do that, but that was awesome. Yes. But it's, it was hard to really figure out where I was supposed to go because there's a lot of overpasses in the uh, in St. Louis. So is there a better place than Facebook to follow where you're you're traveling so that we can support you with our presence? And then I would like to know if we can give some donations tonight too because that would I I would like. To well, do that. what I would say is this: um, you know, Facebook is one place, obviously, but Facebook's still under control. So. There is a, you know, a peoplesconvoy.org, which is actually on the internet, that's not controlled by Facebook. So you can go to, the, to that and get a little bit more of a straight story on some things, because they will sometimes pull things down off of Facebook. But like I went to look for the 10 ironical uh, uh, bills that they were trying to pass, I couldn't find them. I'm like, yeah, where'd they go? Yeah. Well, I went to org and they're there. You just gotta dig them out. They're, because it's old history now, it's down deep into the, into the history of it. But so yes, you can still donate to both of them, and I would do that. I would I would do whatever you can for either one of them because they're both doing good things right now. The Freedom Convoy, uh, they have been hitting these capitals up here that are a problem up in the east for a month, just beating them up and and drumming up support like y'all in the local states okay where the people's convoy is more of a national thing and they're hitting rallies they're doing things like that and coming back across now as far as finding out where to stand on a bridge i don't know how you guys do that i have been amazed i have been at 11 o'clock at night going down the road in the middle of the night drizzling rain and wind blowing and there's a lady on the bridge waving her flag and you're like how did she know <laughs> and bless her heart right 
So I can't tell you how many times we've seen stuff like that, and somehow they figure it out. And I, and I would say probably it's the live streams. They're probably following the live stream so they know exactly where we're at at most any time. Actually, let me comment on that, on how you find out. And I already told you. So besides you, who else have been on them overpasses watching this? Okay. I happen to be in Northern Illinois in the LaSalle, Peru, Utica area because that's where I was original, that's where I was born and raised 21 years and then I met a man and moved down here. Anyways, I happen to be up there visiting family and I get on, it's the Highway 39, the old, it's New 51 in uh, LaSalle and I get to the Oglesby overpass and I'm seeing flags everywhere. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So then I keep going down the road and I'm seeing more and more and I get eight miles north of Bloomington. I'm like, hell, I'm just gonna pull off and find out what the heck. I'm like, certainly the convoy's not coming through here, is it? Cause I had no, I mean, I'm, I'm on my phone looking to see if I could find the map. So there was an IDOT guy in the middle of the road and another truck that had flags and that was about all that was really on that overpass. And I asked the IDOT guy, I said, can I ask what's going on? And he said the convoy, and you said it was because you were there. It was the people's of the freedom free, convoy. It was, was a freedom convoy. The, yeah, on and he said they're 45 minutes behind you. And I thought, well, all right, I'll just be getting home late. I text my husband and I said, I'm going to be late. I'm going to watch the freedom convoy. And as I sat there waiting for the people to line, you know, as the cars came, I thought, all right, I better get on my car. And and the goosebumps. And there was a guy, if you didn't have a flag, you were given a flag, and it's in my car. And, but the goosebumps and the feeling that you, I mean, the, the overpass got utterly crowded. Both sides of the overpass, Traffic full stops. of people. It just shuts down. And then the truckers, and then you just, you know when they're coming because, you know, they've got... You can hear the going overpass to DC, before you. <laughs> yeah, going to D.C., head, you know, D.C. bound, and they're all honking, they're all every, I mean, and it's just, wow. So if you can do it, I mean, it, it was, I, I was just, wow. I've got pictures and everything. It was great. I have not been on an overpass, but I've talked to a lot of people that have. I talked to one lady out of DC. She said that the first time she was on an overpass and we all went on our new turf and somebody struck her lap. And she said it scared her so bad she had to step back away from the edge of the bridge. Yeah. And then she kind of got used to it and then she got back up to it and pretty soon she was leaning over, waving her flag. So it kind of intimidated her at first, but the point that they're doing is they're trying to wake people up. They're trying to bring attention to them. So people are like, and this is what I've seen happen. I've seen it happen all over the nation. We'll be going down an interstate. We may not stop at a certain town or a certain city, but when we're going down through their city and we get on those horns and we're making noise, you watch the people that are down at the filling stations and the gas stations and the, and the, the 7-Elevens or whatever, guess what they do? They're pumping gas, they turn around, what is that noise? And they, they're like, you can see them looking. Next thing you know, they pull their phone out and they're like trying to figure out what's going on. Well, if they type in convoy, guess what's gonna come up? All these live streams. Pretty soon, now they're starting to they're, go home and they say, I just saw a convoy. And then they start looking. And pretty soon, at work the next day, they talk about it. And do you see what I'm saying? And the 1010 rule starts to take effect. And that's what happens. People start getting excited and they start realizing they're not alone. And the other thing is, is they're seeing just American flags. They're seeing patriotic people. They're not seeing, um, let's go Brandon necessarily, <laughs> things like that. So my point is, is we're trying to wake everybody up, okay? So, and anyway, I need to get out of here, but. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, uh, we wanna take up a collection for you, Terry. Is that okay? I mean, are you able to take a collection if we take it up? For the convoy? For the convoy. I will be catching up with them, yes. So if we take a collection up for you, we can, you can give do it that. to you. Okay, so there's a couple of, uh, three buckets, one in the back, one in the middle right here at your table again. Terry, right would here. you say your name and Terry. spell your last name? Is Terry Nachman, okay. but it's spelled N A C H T M A N. Okay. It means nightman in German, so it's okay. Nachman or Nachman. Yeah. 
Okay, and we'll have Terry hang out and he can answer other questions if he's available. But for the sake of time, tonight is the Jackson School Board meeting. So if anybody wants to head over there and support Kristen Lewis in her second official uh, position. But um, Terry, if you would draw out our door prize. Let's see if we, everybody get your red tickets out. Let's see what our number you is. You have to read the number. <laughs> and the last uh, three digits are four, four, one. Four, four, one. Oh, it's you, Norma. Okay, so if I could have everybody's attention for just a minute. So uh, WTPK County, we've been trying to support all the area businesses who are liberty-minded. And so this is uh, Mika's Crafts, and her name is Michaela Stevens, and she makes t-shirts, she makes tumblers. Um, she's got a beautiful We the People tumbler. She was gonna be here tonight and show you all of her own things, but her child is ill, and at the last minute, uh, at five o'clock she had to cancel but she did bring these in she makes these uh go ahead and pass it around uh she uh these are uh, scent hanger things you put your essential oil on it and it uh, so she makes these they're we the people um the tumblers are phenomenal uh, so her cards are located by the prayer request box on that back table uh, you see the white prayer box everybody look that white box is for prayer requests, and then there's um, her cards if you want to order. So tonight, Ms. Nora Parker, you are the recipient of a t-shirt. So um, please reach out to her for any of her goods and uh, things that she is making. So there we go, all right. And then, um, what's his name? Um, school board meeting, if anybody wants to head over there. And uh, we also have a video we're gonna show. Should we show that now and then um, are you here to stay? Yeah, I can I can wrap it. I gotta get I got a piece of equipment broke down somewhere and I gotta go get deal with okay. that. But why uh, Kennedy uh, says you're a good American. Who did? You're a great American. Sean Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah, oh. he always says that. <laughs> you are. Thank well, you. I tell you, you know, we haven't heard a lot from the news media. And we've tried to get them to come out. Um, so you know, beat them up. Ask them why they're not talking about us. So and, Another thing you could do, people, is, is um, yeah, obviously you could donate to the website, you know, obviously. And Free Convoy has the same thing. The live streamers have donation sites. But what I will tell you that is this. Live streamers are making money off the live stream. Okay? The People's Convoy is not making money, but their, their money goes to specific things. Food, the diesel. Okay? And, and other operating costs. There are a lot of people out there, owner operators, that don't have any income coming in at all. And all they're getting is the diesel and the food when they give it. Other than that, they aren't getting anything. So when they break down, we have uh, mechanics that help the cars, and help the RVs get back on the road and keep them going. But the trucks don't. The trucks are expensive to fix. I would venture to say it's going to be a thousand dollars every time you have to pull off that road. If DJ was here, he probably agreed to that. So, if you know anybody that has a truck, have them look into this. Have them jump in. If they can, have them jump in, even if they just go for a little ways. They are going to be in what's the town just to the west of St. Louis? Columbia. 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 There's a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. I think that's what it was. But they're going to be spending the night there. Um, I'll tell you right away. And if you want to just go up and say hi to them and see them while they're there and greet them and then or kick them out the next morning, whatever, they would love that. And it would be incredible for you guys. Now I might just give you this right here and let you post it, but um, so on the 13th, they will be at Forestell, 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 Missouri. They're going to be at the TA Travel Center. At the TA Travel, Travel Center, Center. Concordia, Missouri. Concordia, Missouri. No, that's for fuel. TA Travel Center at Forstell is where they're going to spend the night. So that's on the 13th, okay? It's just around the corner. 
And le next morning they'll leave out of there and head on, on out. So that's one of the small convoys that's trying to get back out there. That's coming out of Colorado. Uh, you got the, uh, and I would encourage you guys to look into this Missouri convoy because it's really, I mean, I think it's really important. I got to the Capitol and I ran into five people that I knew out of Hagerstown. They were from Missouri. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You guys awesome. were very generous. I'm going to hand this over to Terry yeah. right now. And uh, a big hand for Terry. Well, thank you. I will uh, diligently take care of this for you. Uh, we carry flags for people. We carry plaques for people. We carry casket flags for people. We do a lot of different things. And uh, these kind of things we don't take lightly. Definitely uh, are good stewards of it. So thank you. Thank you, thank you so all very much. Thank you. So, so next, I may or may not be here next Tuesday, depending on whether my eye gets better or not. <laughs> so uh, we need the prayer team to be praying for his eye. All right. Thank all right. you very Love much. You guys, thank you for all your hard work you guys are doing. Keep it up. Thank you. Um, so we have.